first step in designing invitations is I usually do all of my calligraphy pieces first. So whether or not I actually use um, nib and ink or my iPad, um, I usually do it first. So I write out all the things that I plan to put in the calligraphy. And um, so I, for this one, I'm going to show you um, how to do it in Procreate. Um, but um, occasionally I will um, do it, nib and ink, and take a photo of it and um, put it into Photoshop and then Illustrator to be digitized. Um, but for this, just the purpose, this is usually faster. And so um, I'm gonna use, I use my Bossy Brush, which is by Bossy Brush Strokes. Um, her brushes are incredible. Um, I love them, I use them for just about everything, so you should go check them out. I will leave a link um, in the bio or whatever it's called. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get started, and I'm gonna write out the names that I need. So after I'm done, doing the calligraphy. Um, so I have each of them, I did each of them with the same size brush. So then when I put them in to Illustrator, they're all going to look very similar. Um, if you do them at different sizes or different brush sizes, um, they aren't gonna match when you vectorize. So what I did here is I have them on different layers and um, I have their the bride and groom's name, um, RSVP, because I'm just only doing an RSVP card. Um, wedding, in case I want that, I do it just in case, um, in case I decide to do the names not in cursive and wedding instead. Um, I have their venue, just in case, and then I have dinner and dancing to follow, which is my typical calligraphy items, unless I'm planning to do something different, unless I have a details card in which I put details or accommodations, and I also write that. So my next step is I'm going to export these um, and put them on my computer so I'm able to put them into Illustrator and vectorize them. So what I'm going to do is I usually share them as a PDF. Um, I have best quality and then I airdrop them to not my iPhone but my computer. So I'm going to do that and then we can go from there. So now that I have taken my calligraphy drawings from Procreate, I sent them over to my computer as PDFs. Um, one of the big things to know and remember is um, not to have any of them overlapping um, in Procreate because you will be um, outlining them, so if they're together, they're going to outline together. Um, but they can be on the same sheet. They can all be on the same sheet if you want them to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first um, um, calligraphy from Procreate. I'm going to drag it in here. So here's the photo. Um, this is the PDF that I grabbed from Procreate. Um, and I'm going to use up here uh, the image trace. So what that's going to do is just trace all that black. So what I do is I I usually use black and white logo. If you have colors this one won't work but um, I usually only do it in black because I can change the color when I get back to it. So I do black and white logo. It takes a little bit um, and then it outlines it. So it doesn't always do it perfectly. Um, but for the most part, it does do it really well, especially if you're using a larger um, Procreate file. I usually use 300 or 400 um, PPI, and then um, um, I usually do it about uh, 3,000 by 3,000 pixels, just to make sure it's big. So um, 
this, um, if you go into window and click image trace, you'll get the options for when you traced your image. Um, so what I usually do, you can, you can change it if you're not seeing things right. So if you change the number of paths, um, it's really gonna, it might change it a lot, but, um, I usually keep it about the same. Um, and then I just ignore the white, um, because that will take it out of the back. Um, and then once I do that and I ignored the white, um, I come back up here and I press expand. So what this does is it creates anchor points in the spots that um, your lettering is. So I usually delete the outer box because it makes it easier. Um, and then what I do he from here is I usually go in and make sure that everything is perfect. For this demonstration, I am not going to go into too much detail but for example um, so I have this spot here that I messed up and this one um, that I messed up in my procreate drawing and um, I'm actually going to take it and I'm going to use my um, so my pen tool and I'm going to delete some of the anchor points so it works better so when I delete them it'll go like this and then I can use this, um, which is the direct selection tool, um, and I can move the anchor points to make it more flowy, I guess, is the correct word. And then um, same with here, I'm just going to take this anchor point and move it um, to about there. Um, it's not perfect, and I'll probably go back and change it, but that's an example of what you can do to edit those. Um, you don't need to, I'm sort of a perfectionist in that way. Um, and then, so I have these, I'm gonna, um, what's, uh, I'm gonna ungroup them and, um, uh, and then I just go through and I want to, what I want to do is, is I want to make sure all the things that need to be together are. And then I'm going to group each individual part of this. So I'm going to group these. I'm going to group these. And I'm going to group these. And now, um, so now that I have the words, um, at least the names, most likely they're going to be next to each other. So. I have it like that and and you can see this background so sometimes it outlines it and it keeps this I don't want that you can delete it it won't show up if you print it um, but sometimes it gets in the way so now you have a perfectly vectorized calligraphy some things still need to be changed a little bit but now you're able to change the colors and make it bigger or smaller if you want but that is the purpose for vectorizing is usually um, to make it really crisp and clean and to um, be able to change the colors so now that we've done this if you go to the next video um, I'm going to show you how to digitize and vectorize your calligraphy that you actually wrote out um, that I did on a different day, but um, I can show you that just in case you need to know it. Otherwise, skip on to the next video where I go more into detail about the imitation design process. Mm -hmm.